بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله صلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله ومصطفاه نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to lessons in fiqh the chapter we're studying Nur is uh, we're studying about the condition of prayer the conditions of salat conditions of prayer and the hadith we have uh, uh, with us today hadith number 162 Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim narrated Jabir radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if the garment if the garment is ample wrap it around your body during the salat meaning prayer a narration by muslim has you should cross the two ends and if it's tight you should wrap it around your waist now this hadith <coughs> to understand it you have to realize that at the time of the Prophet والسلام, people did not have wardrobes full of clothes you know the maximum that a person would own was probably a garment one piece of long piece of cloth so in this hadith the essential thing for a Muslim is to cover his awrah and as we've mentioned before a male's aura is from his belly button to his knees so this area must be covered it is not permissible for anyone to see this area with the exception of his wife only the wife can see this so by this we understand and we learn that those who wear shorts in their houses with their kids you know boys and girls and sit with, the, with their thighs exposed, this is haram. This is not permissible. And those who play sports also, wearing shorts, those who swim, wearing, you know, swimming trunks that uh, expose more than what, what it hides, again, this is also not permissible. It's, it's haram. Now, as far as salat, as far as prayer is concerned, the Prophet <coughs> here, sallallahu alayhi wa is giving us the way that a person should behave if he has one piece of garment so he tells us if it's a long piece of garment then he may wrap it around his waist and then take the end the two ends of it and throw them on his shoulder so he would be by this covering his whole body but if the piece of cloth is tight and it's not sufficient to cover the whole body then he should cover what is minimally required which is the area from the waist to the knees so that his prayer would be accepted some of the scholars said that it is obligatory to cover the shoulders so if someone is in the open for example or, or having a, a, a sea cruise <coughs> and he swims and he comes out of the water and he wants to pray but he doesn't have any clothing except his swimming trunks which is from his waist to uh, his knees then Al Imam Ahmed says that his prayer is not acceptable he has to have a t-shirt he has to throw a towel on his shoulders he has to cover his shoulders the majority of scholars the other scholars say no his prayer is acceptable yet it's recommendable not obligatory it's recommendable to cover the shoulders and uh, this what this hadith tells us about now as a, again this cannot be realized or imagined because we have <coughs> lots of clothing we have t-shirts we have everything that we wish to wear we have a lot of them but at the, at the time of the Prophet they, had, they used to have only one piece of cloth one piece of garment to wear throughout the whole uh, a year because this is what they were able to afford the following hadith hadith um salama narrated by um salama may well be pleased with her see as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam can a woman pray in a long dress and a veil without wearing a lower garment he meaning sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied if the long dress is ample and covers the surface of her feet now this hadith again is not authentic it's a weak hadith and from this hadith and many other hadiths 
we learned that women at the time of the Prophet ﷺ used to wear a number of sets of clothes. You know, khimar, dir, izar, and so on. Different names and different, different usages and uh, 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 description to them. But what we need to learn is that in order for a woman, for her prayer to be accepted, she has to cover her awrah. And as you recall, Fadi, what is the awrah of women in salah when there are no men watching? The whole body except the hands and the face. Except the hands and the face. And we've mentioned also that Abu Hanifa and Imam uh, Ibn Taymiyyah say that even the feet. the feet are not considered to be awrah during prayer. That is, when there are no strange men looking. But if the, uh, the house is... The, the, the husband or the son or the brother uh, are present, then it's okay uh, uh, to cover, to uncover the feet, the hands, and the face. It's okay, as mentioned earlier. <clears throat> but we have to uh, note that the dress of women, though there is no one in the room except her husband or her brother, she has to wear something that does not see through. You cannot see through it. And something that is not uh, 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 tight. Because if the clothing she's wearing are tight and show her figure, this is unacceptable. And if she's wearing something that is not tight, that does not show her figure, but you can see through it, again, this is not acceptable. <clears throat> which means that a woman may not pray in a garment that is so thin when she bows or prostrates or she, even when she stands, it, you can tell the description of her body. This is unacceptable. It's also unacceptable for men to wear tight pants and pray with them because it shows their figure. And it's also unacceptable for men to, pay, to, to wear see-through clothes. And because, again, the reason for covering the awrah so that the, there is no fitna, so that the sexual desire uh, is not aroused. And by wearing ample clothes, by wearing things that cover the body, that does not show the figures of the body, and that does not show what's under that piece of clothing, uh, uh, one succeeds in doing this. Any questions or should we move on? The following hadith. Narrated by Ammar bin Rabi'ah radiallahu anhu. We were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ammar or Amir? Amir. Okay. Narrated by Amir bin Rabi'ah radiallahu anhu. We were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during a dark night and we became uncertain about the Qibla, the direction of Mecca. We then prayed without being certain. When the sun rose, we discovered that we had prayed towards a direction other than the Qibla. So this verse was revealed. So wherever you turn yourselves or your faces, there is the face of Allah. Very well. Now this hadith talks about the third condition of prayer, Mr. Muhammad, which is Abu Malik. Facing the Qibla. Facing the Qibla. It talks about facing the Qibla. It is a condition that has to be fulfilled. Providing that one knows where the Qibla is. In this hadith, it tells us, Amr, may Allah be pleased with him, tells us that they were with the Prophet ﷺ in a dark night. This hadith was uh, uh, graded by uh, Al-Tirmidhi as weak. And some scholars say, it is weak. Yet, we talk about it because it talks about one of the conditions of Salat. So Amr says that we couldn't figure out where the Qibla was. So we prayed to a, a particular direction. We thought we gave the matter some effort. And we thought that it was appropriate to pray in this, this direction because this was a gut feeling that it is in this direction. We had no compasses. We could not see the stars. And we cannot determine which direction is which. 
So it's logical that they do not postpone the salah as it will, the time of it will run out shortly. So they prayed on this direction. After uh, uh, it was all cleared out, they have discovered after the sun has risen that it was the wrong direction. So they discovered and realized that they have prayed to the wrong qibla. Yet Allah Azza wa has revealed to them the verses that says, so uh, wherever you turn yourselves or your faces, there is the face of Allah, providing that you have done what you are supposed to do and you have, you know, done your best. If you face other than the Qibla, this is acceptable because Allah will accept your prayer. Again, we don't have to uh, 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 go into much details as it has, we have s talked about this uh, before. Brother uh, Fadi. Say for example, someone, he doesn't know where the Qibla is and he's like in a place where he can pray uh, and there's not a mosque around, for instance, in a non-Muslim country, for instance. Can he just walk in the car and just sit in the car the way it's parked and just pray uh, towards uh, like the direction where the car is uh, heading without f f finding like n without praying towards the qibla because he can't find it, can't find out where the qibla is, you know. I have one question: mm. Why does he pray in the car? Is he traveling? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So he's traveling in a city. Or outside the city in, 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 in a city freeway? In the, the, like the furthest mosque, the closest mosque is pretty far away. And he cannot reach that mosque on time? No. Then he should, uh, 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 you know, stop the car and pray outside the car. But he doesn't know the qibla. Well, regardless, you do not pray in the car. It's not allowed for you to pray in the car because one of the pillars of salat is standing up when you can. When, when you're able to stand up, you have to stand up. So, fard, obligatory prayer, you're not allowed to pray it in the car or in the airplane unless you're standing up, except if there's a necessity, meaning that there, is, there are turbulences uh, on the aircraft you're traveling on and you, there's no possibility for you to stand up or to go to the prayer uh, area. So then, this is something you have to do. But, but what if it's during a period of time where it's probably dangerous, where like people didn't at, at that certain time uh, respect Islam, for instance, for the international incidents taking place, and well, he was afraid? Okay, to, to talk about uh, uh, this particular case, we'll pause for a short break, and we'll answer your question, inshallah, just right after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and welcome back. Brother Fadi had an interesting question. It deals with terrorists and terrorist attacks and what, how we should pray when, uh, uh, when put in such a situation. I, don't, I hope you don't have any terrorist links, Brother no, Fadi. No. Okay, go ahead. What's it, what, what is your question? I'm saying again, if someone is in an area, in a non-Muslim country, and there's not a mosque or close by, and he's afraid to stand outside and just pray in the open, standing, doing takbir and iqamah, and it's him alone or with a friend, for instance. And he's ca his car is parked in the parking spot, and he cannot move it. So he's afraid, and there's no mosque around. And he doesn't want the, the time of prayer to pass him. Can he just go in his car, lock the door, sit in the driver's seat, pray sitting, finish his prayer, and then come out and continue his affairs? Seriously speaking, this is one hell of a hypothetical situation. It can be imagined if you are surrounded by zombies and the minute you open the door of your car and they're going to snatch you and you're going to start eating you. But even though in such a, a situation, if you drive for about 10-15 minutes away from them, it's going to clear out. So let's assume that you are, like some of the brothers just mentioned, a while ago, you are driving in a safari park, and it's a long drive. And if you park your car and you come out, a lion or a tiger or a crocodile or, uh, or uh, whatever animal would jump you and probably harm you. So you have no way of leaving your car, and the closest uh, distance 
for, for, for clearance would be uh, uh, not sufficient for you to pray after you reach it. Then, only then you may pray. But you have to remember that there are so many things that are imaginable and not real. Lots of the guys say, I'm in a, a situation where I cannot pray. I can't do this, I can't do that. May I have the excuse to do so? Some brothers call me and say, well, we are in a country where Islam is being oppressed. Though it's a Muslim country, but if I don't shave my beard, there's a possibility that the authorities would come and inter uh, interrogate me and ask me questions and maybe throw me in jail for a week or so. So is it okay to shave my beard? This is hypothetical. Now, how many of the brothers have faced such a, uh, a thing? said, well, I know one out of a million. Then this is, n n this is not an, a good excuse. So you don't do this. You do it, it's permissible for you to cross the line. If you are faced with danger, if you are being you know, uh, harassed or you're being uh, 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 punished for something that Islam tells you it's okay not to do it in such a case. But just because you're afraid or you're imagining things, you, your phone is tapped or people are following you, then this means I have to shave my beard, my wife has to take off her uh, uh, niqab and cover, and we have to be westernized just to be normal people. This is unacceptable. Uh, Brother Mustafa had a question. Um, the same, the same, almost the same question. Suppose you're driving and then you're stuck in traffic, <coughs> and you know for sure that the nearest mosque, when you reach it, you're going to miss prayer. Is mm. it allowed for you, for example, to park your car and then pray in of your course. car sitting? Of course. No. While so you're sitting? You stand? No. You remember that the Prophet ﷺ said that I was given five things that no other prophets or messenger has been given. And the second thing he said, that the earth was made for me a place of prayer and ablution. Which means that even if you're stuck in, in traffic, you will be able to find a place to park your car and pray even on the pavement on the, or on the, or on the asphalt or anywhere. It's not you have to pray in mosque. No. You can pray anywhere. But the problem is with praying sitting down. Because this means that it's exactly like if a person says, well, I, I, I don't have water to perform ablution, and my house is about an hour drive. So is it okay to make tayammum? Are you in the city? He said, yes. Are there mosques around? She said, oh, plenty. Are there grocery stores around? She said, oh, yes, I can buy water like crazy, but I don't want to. I'm, I'm used to performing ablution in my house. So can I pray with Tayammum? Answer is no. As long as there's a possibility or you're able to go and get water, you can't pray with Tayammum. As long as you can park your car and pray standing up, you are not allowed to pray in your car. Again, Brother Fadi. But isn't there an evidence of taking the direction of the Qibla on the Daba on the camel and praying on it? Yeah, but what kind of prayer? Only voluntary prayer. Ah, there was no, not in no, no obligatory prayer, none whatsoever, at all. It's a, a prerequisite that you face the Kaaba, the Qibla, when you pray obligatory prayer. And as, uh, as far as the other forms of Sunnah, Sunnah Mu'akkada, preferred Sunnah, also the, uh, the the scholars say you have to follow or you have to face the direction of the Qibla and you have to be standing up. But now preferred. Uh, uh, voluntary prayer that has no cause and no reason, you may pray in any direction you wish. But I heard that Sheikh Hassan al Tamiya, he like wrote a book on the back of a camel going to pilgrimage, and uh, did he stop to pray every time, like on the on the standing up? There are so many issues here. One, mm -hmm. that is Sheikh, you heard, yeah. and it, it's not a, a, a method of uh, transferring or transporting knowledge through hearsay or word say. You have to have it written down. Secondly, it was not Ibn Taymiyyah, it was Ibn al-Qayyim al who wrote the book of Zad al-Mi'ad and he did not say that he wrote it on camelback hmm. because even if you... Have you ever ridden a camel? 
Have you ever been on yeah, the yeah, camel's camel. back? Yeah. You imagine yourself, ha you, they different. didn't have any fountain pens, huh? Mm. They, they didn't have any, you know, one of the nice pens we have. They had to have uh, uh, ink in one container and, and the feather, and they used to do this. So imagine what would happen, what kind of, you know, calligraphy you would have at the end of the day. Uh, th th this is not the truth. Thirdly, now you are assuming, saying that even if he wrote it on the back of a camel, would it be logical that he would dismount and pray every single time a prayer comes? They didn't have any bathrooms on their camels, so he had to answer the call of nature. So what would he do whenever he had to answer the call of nature? So y you don't build your allegation on possibilities. We have a rule in fiqh. It says... Whenever there is a possibility, then this is not good for, it's not an evidence. إِذَا تَطَرَّقَ الْإِحْتِمَالِ بَطَلَ الْإِسْتِدْلَالِ So if you say that I have an evidence, but it might mean so, and it might mean the other way, then immediately you reject this. This is unacceptable. Evidence has to be clear-cut and straightforward. Coming back again, obligatory prayer, you have to face the Kaaba, the Qibla, and you have to be in the standing position, unless it is impossible, or it, there's a hazard on, on your or health or life, then it's or okay for you to pray sitting down. Uh, we move on to the following hadith, hadith number 100, and, if I'm correct, 165? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, please. Narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the direction between the east and the west is a qibla. Can you explain this hadith for me, Fadi? The direction between east and west is the qibla? Oh, uh, so north? Is qibla. Is qibla. And south? Is qibla. Mm. How would that be? The direction between east and west facing Kaaba. Yes. Mm. So it's either north or west. How? Mm. What, 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 what do you mean by no, Mustafa? Yes. Yeah, it can be, right? So you have to know what is the origin of this hadith to be able to understand it. Muhammad? Yeah, because it's, it's the, uh, located in the Middle East. Oh, and on one side is Mashriq, other side is Maghrib. So the, between both of them is Qabla. So if I face north or south, it's okay? No. No. Nobody says this. This hadith, the Prophet said it when he was where? In the Kaaba. In Medina, mm -hmm. in Medina, when he was in Medina. Now, where is the Qibla for those who are in Medina? It's to their so south. south, it's to their south, okay? So, this is the Qibla, and this is south, and this is east, and this is west. So, if I go this way, I'm not facing the Qibla directly. <clears throat> and if I go this way, it's a nice chair. It's nice. I'm not facing the Qibla directly. So the Prophet tells us that if you cannot pinpoint the Qibla, then whatever between the East and West is considered to be Qibla. So uh, a, a, a small diversion is accepted. But if you go all the way to the East, this is not accepted. If you go all the way to the West or to the South, this is not accepted. So you have to understand <coughs> where, uh, what the context of this Hadith is so that you don't go into uh, details that are not unnecessary. Do, uh, do you understand this? This means that if I can pinpoint the Qibla directly, I can pray to it. And any small diversion would, would, would be okay. Any small diversion would be all right, and there's nothing wrong in this. You don't have to be really, you know, uh, 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 to, uh, down to the details and exactly the degrees and, and, and the minutes of, of the direction it has to be this. It's, it's preferable, yes, but if it's unintentional, it's okay. Now, the condition of facing the Qibla, we, you're excused in many cases not to face it. When? One. When are you excused not to face the Qibla? Uh, when you don't know. Not, when you don't know. And you tried your best and you couldn't know. This is one. Two. You're riding a vehicle and to play the sunnah prayer. No, 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 I'm talking about obligatory prayer. Oh. When you're in an airplane. Well, not necessarily, no. 
when you're too sick to move. Okay, excellent. When you are unable, when you are unable to face the qibla because of illness or because you're tired, you are in uh, uh, locked in a cell, God forbid, and you can't face the qibla. This is the only direction you can. Then you can, you may do this. Uh, uh, another one, and last we will inshallah conclude our, our episode with it. In case of fear, so it's not the airplane, it's not the car, it's fear. If you're afraid, if you stand up, then something bad will happen to you, something awful would take place, then this is especially in the case of a pilot, if a single pilot flying the aircraft, and if he stands up and prays, uh, hell breaks loose, so he is supposed to sit down and continue and pray uh, uh, as he is. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program, so until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.